This video is about understanding the Schrodinger's wave equation. This video is for those students who are like starting out in quantum mechanics and are really afraid of this equation because this equation looks really foreign. So after watching this video, you will get familiar with the Schrodinger's wave equation and also in this video, you will learn some really important and basic concepts of quantum mechanics. So to understand what the Schrodinger wave equation is, you first need to understand what is the wave particle duality. So let us first understand that. Before quantum mechanics came into picture, people thought that particles and waves are two different entities. Like waves are something that are not localized. Like you can't tell wave is here, here or here. But you can tell particle is here. That means particles are localized. Two or more waves can exist at the same point in space but particles can't do that so they are two different things but some experiments like the photoelectric effect the electron diffraction experiment etc etc concluded that waves can act like particles and particles can act like waves so waves and particles were sides of a same coin they were representation of a same thing so this was a new concept and this is known as the wave particle duality that is waves and particles are the sides of the same coin sometimes the particle nature pops up and sometimes the wave nature pops up so now we have to ask when will this particle nature pops up and when will this wave nature pops up so to understand that you need to understand what are matter waves so matter waves are the waves associated with matter you might ask that the objects around me are acting like particles why they are not acting like waves the answer is that their de broglie wavelength is really small they are massive and they move with very low velocity and this h thing in here is known as the planck's constant its order is 10 to the power minus 34 so the wavelength is really small at your dimensions but when we go smaller, 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 and when we reach the quantum realm, what happens is that this de Broglie wavelength of an electron or a particle, mostly we deal with electrons, becomes comparable to the dimensions we are dealing with. Then the particle starts acting like a wave and we have to apply the Schrodinger wave equation. That is like the Newton law of quantum mechanics. Also, the objects around you are really massive. And that's why you can simply apply Newton law and predict things about them really easily. But at quantum dimensions, at very low dimensions, this thing is really important. This is known as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. This simply tells us that the uncertainty in the momentum and the uncertainty in position must be greater than or equal to h cut by 2. This is a very small number. h cut is simply h just divided by 2 pi. So h upon 2 pi comes a lot in quantum mechanics so we gave it a new name that is known as h cut. So this principle is really important in quantum mechanics but not at your scale because the things are really big and this small uncertainty is like very small and negligible for the systems you are interested in. Now, if you have studied classical mechanics, then you must know this equation. This is the most important equation in classical mechanics. This is the second law of Newton. This tells us that the resultant force on a particle is equal to its mass times the acceleration. Now, Take any object around you and solve this equation for that and you will get to know everything you can know about that object. For example, I've solved a simple example in here. This is simply a differential equation and the variable is x that is the position. So we can write Newton law in this way also. So if we solve this equation for a simple object like a freely falling body and the only force acting on the body is its weight. So f equal to mg and f equal to ma then we get the acceleration equal to g. From that we can get the velocity and if we have the initial condition we can get its position and also we can get its momentum and everything else we need but now let us say you bought a microscope a really good microscope and that microscope can look at atoms and now you want to apply this equation for the electrons revolving around atom and you find out that this equation is not correct this is not giving you the right results because this equation doesn't deal with the wave particle duality and it doesn't include the uncertainty principle so to incorporate all that we use another equation that is the Schrodinger 
wave equation. Now, I want to tell you that the Newton law you saw up there can be derived from the Schrodinger wave equation. And the Schrodinger wave equation in itself is a basic principle. That is, it can't be derived from anything else. Yes, we will do its derivation, but it's derived for a wave propagating in free space. But we can apply this equation for everything and we get really amazing results. So this equation in itself is a postulate and this is known as the Schrodinger wave equation. At first it looks really weird but if you do its derivation and understand its basic parts then it's really easy to understand. This is the time dependent form and this is the time independent form. This form is really important because when you start quantum mechanics you mainly use this form and solve equations for this. Not this one because we need elaborate mathematics to solve both of these equations but this one is easier than this one. Now from the Newton law we got all the information we needed about the body. From this equation, we also get all the information we need about the body. So now in the quantum realm, what we can know about the body? That is, we have to ask. So in the quantum realm, you can know the probability of finding the particle at a certain point in space. And that is given by this psi. And also in the quantum realm, you can know the energies that the particle can take. That is this thing in here. First, let me explain what this equation tells us. This is a total energy term. This is the kinetic energy term and this is potential energy term. This fairly looks like potential energy, but this doesn't look like kinetic energy. But if you see its derivation, this is derived from the kinetic energy and this is the total energy. So this equation is simply that the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus potential energy. And if the potential doesn't depend on time, this equation reduces to this equation. And this is the time independent form. I will focus on this one because this is really important and from this you can easily understand this one too. So if we look at this thing and take psi common this inside is an operator and we call that the Hamiltonian and Hamiltonian is known as the total energy operator and if we have the wave function of a particle and if we apply the Hamiltonian on that wave function then we get its energy eigenvalues and these are really important. If we get these we can get a lot of things about the particle and from this wave function everything else we can get. So now let us look a simple example and see how the solution of this Schrodinger wave equation looks like. So if you solve Schrodinger wave equation time independent version for a particle in a box you get this psi and this energy E. Now notice that this n in here is a natural number that starts from 1, 2, 3 and so on and this is the same n. Now we can see from here the psi thing in here takes forms like this and in real world we have a crazy similar thing like this. Take a string and bound its end and then oscillate it. You will get these normal modes like the string will either oscillate like this, either oscillate like this or either oscillate like this depending on the energy you are giving to the string. So we are exciting waves on a string which are bounded and we are getting this normal board and this similar thing is obtained for a particle in a box. That means the particle in a box is like a wave trapped inside a box and this is only when the de Broglie wavelength of that particle is comparable to the dimensions of the box. So now like if the box is closed and you have to predict like when I will open the box where the particle will be given the energy of the particle you have to take psi square. Now the important thing to notice here is that the psi thing doesn't tell anything about the particle. It's a complex thing but psi square tells us the probability of finding the particle at a certain point in space. This is known as the bone interpretation of the wave function. So if we do psi square, we get something like this. So for the first energy eigenvalue, the probability of finding particle is like this, like the maximum probability is here. And for second energy eigenvalue, the maximum probability is here. And for the third energy eigenvalue, the maximum probabilities are here. So Another thing to notice in here that the energy values 
are also discrete not continuous because in the real world these energy values are really close we assume that these are continuous but when the dimensions of the box are comparable to the de broglie wavelength of the particle then these energy levels split and we get this behavior that the probability of finding the particles at certain points is higher than the probability at other points now notice that i am i am saying probability i am not sure when i will open the box where this particle will be it can be here or here but the probability is really low so this is what the schrodinger wave equation tells us on solving that we can know everything about a quantum particle similarly you solve this equation for hydrogen atom and you get really good results and they match with the practicals and also for helium atom we can solve it but after that we can't solve it analytically computers do the job and computer mostly get us these energy eigen values which can help us to determine the specific heat etc etc so i hope you have understood what the schrodinger wave equation tells us so now in the next video we will derive this equation and its derivation is fairly easy but that derivation doesn't mean that we can derive this equation this in itself is a basic principle and if you have any question regarding regarding this topic ask in the comments below right now because if you don't ask the questions you won't understand what this equation is you might think that you have understood but you have not understood this this is much more complicated than you think so thanks for watching this video and always remember that math is everything